Democratic candidate Joe Biden recently announced his plan for Black America on his website. And I'm going to leave a link to Joe Biden's official website so you can take your own look at Joe Biden's plan for Black America, which he has called Lift Every Voice. Now, when I take a critical examination of Joe Biden's so-called plan for Black America, it shows me that your Joe Biden is extremely desperate to try to appeal to black voters. And he's also being a little sneaky in his attempt to go after the black vote because he's been listening, as I believe it, or people in his campaign have been listening, to the rumblings going on in new black media. And he sees that most of these people now who have been listening to new black media are now really thinking about how they're going to vote, and what they're going to get in exchange for their vote. So what he wants to do is he wants to get in front of the black voting bloc so that they will take whatever crumbs he offers them in his Lift Every Voice plan instead of making demands of him and telling him exactly what they specifically want. Because... In this age of new black media, more and more black people are starting to really understand the political process, and because they understand the political process, they are no longer out here accepting plans like Joe Biden is offering them, like this Lift Every Voice. No, the average black voter these days, more and more, is starting to make demands as related to what they want from their politicians. And what your Joe Biden wants to do is he does not want to listen to the demands of the frustrated black voters who are already tired after eight years of Barack Obama, who gave them no hope and no change, and continues to talk down to black people like in a recent series of articles where Michelle Obama recently castigated black voters for staying home. And this is the big problem that is going to really affect Joe Biden and his 2020 campaign is that, sadly, many on the left just don't understand how they are coming across to black voters and how they are still having this paternalistic perception of black voters where they take the black vote for granted and they still want to blame black people for things like Donald Trump being elected president of the United States. When the real issue is the people on the left just don't seem to understand that you cannot just sit there and give black voters the argument that Donald Trump is a racist, Donald Trump is a bigot, especially when you have a candidate who was known for writing laws like the drug law, which sentenced black men to prison for having crack cocaine versus powder cocaine, the 1994 crime bill, which disproportionately led to black men becoming incarcerated, and the three strikes and your outlaw, which led to black men winding up being incarcerated on a third offense. So your Joe Biden already has a real setback as related to black voters, as related to his voting record, excuse me, and his policy record. But instead of those on the left coming up with an argument to try to convince the black community that they should vote for him based on what policies or what tangibles he is going to offer them. Instead, what they want to do is tell us how bad Donald Trump is instead of trying to give us a reason or a series of reasons to go out here and vote for Joe Biden. And most black people don't see any tangibles being offered on the table from your Joe Biden. And when you take a critical examination of Joe Biden's Lift Every Voice agenda, 
it really does not offer any tangibles to the black voter at all. I mean, all of we're getting here are a bunch of vague and ambiguous statements of what he may or may not do, but no real tangibles like your whites have received, your Hispanics have received, or your Asians have received. And black people are tired of hearing about what you say you're going to do. No, what black people want are tangibles brought to the table, like $16 trillion in reparations and new policies to go out here and protect black people from things like police brutality and discrimination in the workplace and discrimination from organizations like the Me Too movement, which in recent years has been going after black men in an attempt to malign the reputations of black men out here without giving them due process under the law. So black people don't really see your Joe Biden offering up much in terms of tangibles. And he talks about lifting every voice. But the big problem with Joe Biden is he doesn't hear any voice. And that's the thing that really annoys me about this whole lift every voice plan for black America. Your Joe Biden is clearly not interested in hearing the voices of black people, especially those who are a part of new black media, who are now out here saying what agenda we want and what agenda we are going to vote for. Because the only agenda black people are going to vote for is a black agenda, and the black agenda has to have tangibles that allow black people to become empowered economically. That is the only thing that matters to most black people these days because we are tired of hearing about promises of hope and change. We are tired of hearing glib, program, glib phrases like lift every voice that don't lift anyone except a handful of black elites, a handful of black pimp pastors, and a handful of other blacks who run nonprofits and allow them to run away with a whole bunch of tax credits and government grants, but leave most black people in black communities continuously poor. Most black people are tired of hearing about people telling us how they're going to lift us out of poverty because we've heard these things for the last 50 years from your Lyndon Baines Johnson from your Jimmy Carter, from your Bill Clinton, yet black people still remain in the same situation politically because the politicians always want to dictate to us and we and many black people are now understanding that they aren't the ones who are supposed to be dictated to by a Joe Biden to tell us he's going to lift every voice. No, he is supposed to hear every voice and if he does not want to hear those voices and deliver on those tangibles that are directed towards a black empowerment agenda, then he doesn't get the black vote. It is as simple as that. And sadly, your Joe Biden clearly has not heard the message because it looks like he wants to get in front of the black people to tell black people what he's going to give them instead of listening to what we actually want, because the only reason why black voters are going to come out for any candidate in this hotly contested race is if they are offering tangibles for a black agenda. And if they're not offering tangibles for a black agenda, then we're going to see another low black voter turnout like we saw in 2016 and 2018. And there's no way anybody like Michelle Obama can shame black people for not coming out because it's clear that the left doesn't take the black folk for granted and it takes the black community for granted and it does not appreciate the black voter because the black voter is the last one they want to consider for offering tangibles to for their votes 
and they have no respect for the black voter because to continue talking down to the black voter when you know you are already behind with a weak candidate shows how little respect you still have for the black voter because to come to the black voter talking about how you're going to lift every voice in a paternalistic fashion without listening to every black voice to hear what black people want and hear what black people need. That really shows how this whole party still continues to take black voters for granted and still believes that it has the black vote in the bag. And it's clear that more and more black voters are saying after not getting their tangibles through hope and change in 2008 and 2012 that they have no incentive to go out here and vote for any candidate because neither candidate on any party is really looking to give one of the largest voting blocks any sort of tangibles. Now, there are some that would say, oh, Hispanics are larger than black people, but that part, that is pretty fragmented. You have a group of Hispanics who believe that they are white and they are supporting Trump, and 30% of them went to vote for Trump. So the black voting bloc is one that is still very essential. And again, it looks like your Biden is not taking the black vote seriously, because to think you're going to dictate to the black voter that, that you're going to give them a plan, that's not how you're going to win black voters in 2020. No, you have to give the black voter exactly what they want, and this time the black voter wants tangibles and they want tangibles in the form of $16 trillion in reparations. And that money is readily and available there, because if you could get $2 trillion to deal with COVID-19, then you can get $16 trillion to deal with black voters and their debt and their centuries of past discrimination and allow them to finally gain the economic empowerment that will allow them to become a competitive group here in America and be finally able to have an opportunity to actually achieving the American dream and achieving true greatness in this country. That's what we want for our, our t votes in 2020. We want tangibles and we want tangible reparations and we want tangibles as related to policies that will allow us to not to allow us an equal or an actual equal opportunity something we were denied through affirmative action which was given to white women and denied to us and continues to be denied to us even by people like your black president and his wife who still doesn't understand why black voters are staying home and the reason why black voters are staying home is because the parties continue to approach us with paternalistic and condescending plans like lift every voice instead of listening to every black voice out here. And many of those black voices are clearly saying, we want tangibles. And if we don't get tangibles, then we have no real reason to, to vote for any candidate because the policy is no black agenda, no black vote, no tangibles, no black vote. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.